Welcome to the Alcon Experience Academy, your one-stop resource for training, product information, and much more. The Alcon Experience Academy is a great resource for any healthcare professional who engages with the eye, including ophthalmologists, optometrists, nurses, technicians, and students. If staying up to date on products, services, techniques, and training taught by professionals from around the world is important to you, the Alcon Experience Academy should be your go-to source. Let's take a look. This scrolling banner will immediately let you know what's new. Content of interest can be customized by you to show the latest content based on your personal preferences, whether by an area of focus or by specific topics of interest. This engaging content comes from some of the leading specialists from around the world. Recently added content will show the newest resources added to the site, allowing you to explore some of the latest innovations in eye care. My Courses is where you will find courses for your specific needs. It also shows the courses you have taken and completed and those courses you are still in the process of completing. In addition to other helpful tools, additional resources will point you to more than 100 informative FAQ videos on Alcon technology. My Events shows you a calendar of the upcoming webinars or face-to-face -face training events that you've signed up to attend. Now let's take a look at some features of the Alcon Experience Academy. Accessibility. Gain access to the content you need when you need it. The mobile-friendly format allows you to access content on the go. Usability. Ease of use on every step of your informational journey. Navigation. Move easily from one topic to the next, from one piece of content to the next. Searchability. Find what you need fast. Trackability. Keep track of the modules you've completed, ones you still need to complete, and exactly where you are in the modules you've started. Robust content. Over 500 training videos, with additional content being added all the time. Getting started is easy. Simply register at alconexperienceacademy.com and gain access to all of this content today. Sustain Complete Lubricant Eye Drops offer all-in-one relief for irritated dry eyes. For patients with any type of dry eye, this revolutionary formula hydrates and protects all layers of the tear film. The unique HP Guar-based formulation contains polar phospholipids and mineral oil in the form of tiny nano-sized droplets. As Sustain Complete spreads across the ocular surface, the small nano-sized lipid droplets cover more ocular surface area. Upon installation, HP Guar forms a hydrophilic meshwork, cross-linking with the mucoaqueous layer, creating a protective elastic matrix. This enhanced meshwork allows for slow release of lipid nanodroplets. These nano-sized lipid droplets migrate to replenish the top lipid layer of the tear film repairing gaps and providing more complete coverage of the lipid layer. That's how Sustain Complete Lubricant Eye Drops hydrate and protect the mucoaqueous and lipid layers of the tear film. Help your patients feel unstoppable with the all-in-one relief of Sustain Complete. Two drops, one unstoppable you. For your next cataract procedure, you're invited to the ultimate experience of control and clarity. The Clarion IOL with the Autonomy Delivery System. Autonomy is the first and only automated, disposable, preloaded IOL delivery system. With its innovative CO2 power delivery mechanism, Autonomy brings the predictable precision of automation to every delivery of the Clarion Aspheric IOL. The device takes just three steps to prepare. Fill the device with an Alcon qualified viscoelastic. Remove the lockout assembly and use your thumb to advance the plunger 
and fold the IOL up to the pause location. Once the lens is in the pause location, confirm that the lens is properly folded and deliver it within one minute. The ergonomic design fits comfortably in your hand for intuitive control of the device during delivery. While the responsive speed control lever enables easy, single-handed control of IOL advancement. With its proprietary depth guard, Autonomy protects incisions as small as 2.2 millimeters. During delivery, you can vary the plunger speed at any time by adjusting the pressure on the speed control lever. Simply press the lever with your index finger to advance the plunger and deliver the IOL, ensuring that the leading haptic is properly placed within the eye as you implant the lens. It's that easy to deliver the Clarion IOL, a lens with a new hydrophobic acrylic biomaterial of unsurpassed clarity. Built with the exceptional bio-optics and biomechanics of Alcon IOLs, Clarion features an advanced IOL design with a fully usable 6mm aspheric optic dedicated to sharp, crisp vision from edge to edge. Produced with an advanced manufacturing process, Clarion also features a precision edge design. This design includes a proprietary edge curvature that reduces edge glare, as well as a continuous posterior barrier that guards against PCO and minimizes ND YAG procedures. Stable force haptics give Clarion exceptional axial stability across a range of capsule sizes, with minimal axial shift and maximum refractive predictability. With its ultra smooth optic, Clarion delivers unsurpassed clarity from the start, with among the lowest level of surface haze. And with its new microvacuole resistant hydrophobic acrylic biomaterial, Clarion delivers unsurpassed clarity that lasts. This is a truly pristine premium IOL, delivered with easy, intuitive control. Together, Clarion Autonomy is the ultimate IOL delivery experience. In 1976, a picture from outer space sparked the world's imagination. NASA's Viking 1 sent an image of what appeared to be a human face on the surface of Mars. The story took on mythical proportions. Many took it as proof that alien life existed. But it would be decades before improved technology would let them take a better picture. Innovative technology like 3D visualization can help you see reality and transform your surgical experience. Discover the wonders of 3D visualization technology from Mars to your operating room. It's time to take another look. Welcome to the Alcon Experience Academy, your one-stop resource for training, product information, and much more. The Alcon Experience Academy is a great resource for any healthcare professional who engages with the eye, including ophthalmologists, optometrists, nurses, technicians, and students. If staying up to date on products, services, techniques, and training taught by professionals from around the world is important to you, the Alcon Experience Academy should be your go-to source. Let's take a look. This scrolling banner will immediately let you know what's new. Content of interest 
can be customized by you to show the latest content based on your personal preferences, whether by an area of focus or by specific topics of interest. This engaging content comes from some of the leading specialists from around the world. Recently added content will show the newest resources added to the site, allowing you to explore some of the latest innovations in eye care. My Courses is where you will find courses for your specific needs. It also shows the courses you have taken and completed and those courses you are still in the process of completing. In addition to other helpful tools, additional resources will point you to more than 100 informative FAQ videos on Alcon technology. My Events shows you a calendar of the upcoming webinars or face-to-face -face training events that you've signed up to attend. Now let's take a look at some features of the Alcon Experience Academy. Accessibility. Gain access to the content you need when you need it. The mobile-friendly format allows you to access content on the go. Usability. Ease of use on every step of your informational journey. Navigation. Move easily from one topic to the next, from one piece of content to the next. Searchability. Find what you need fast. Trackability. Keep track of the modules you've completed, ones you still need to complete, and exactly where you are in the modules you've started. Robust content. Over 500 training videos, with additional content being added all the time. Getting started is easy. Simply register at alconexperienceacademy.com and gain access to all of this content today. Sustain Complete Lubricant Eye Drops offer all-in-one relief for irritated dry eyes. For patients with any type of dry eye, this revolutionary formula hydrates and protects all layers of the tear film. The unique HP Guar-based formulation contains polar phospholipids and mineral oil in the form of tiny nano-sized droplets. As Sustain Complete spreads across the ocular surface, the small nano-sized lipid droplets cover more ocular surface area. Upon installation, HP Guar forms a hydrophilic meshwork, cross-linking with the mucoaqueous layer, creating a protective elastic matrix. This enhanced meshwork allows for slow release of lipid nanodroplets. These nano-sized lipid droplets migrate to replenish the top lipid layer of the tear film, repairing gaps and providing more complete coverage of the lipid layer. That's how Sustain Complete Lubricant Eye Drops hydrate and protect the mucoaqueous and lipid layers of the tear film. Help your patients feel unstoppable with the all-in-one relief of Sustain Complete. Two drops, one unstoppable you. In 1976, a picture from outer space sparked the world's imagination. NASA's Viking 1 sent an image of what appeared to be a human face on the surface of Mars. The story took on mythical proportions. Many took it as proof that alien life existed. But it would be decades before improved technology would let them take a better picture. Innovative technology like 3D visualization can help you see reality and transform your surgical experience. Discover the wonders of 3D visualization technology from Mars to your operating room. It's time to take another look.
Good afternoon, everyone. It's that time of the week once again, and we know uh, we all know what it means, right? It's another time for an interesting episode of ITV. It is my privilege to welcome you all to episode 22 of PMC ITV. I'm Dr. Debbie Shapno, and I invite all of you to join us this afternoon for another exciting virtual learning opportunity. This is the second part of PMC Alcon Impact Program, brought to you by the Cataract Section of the Medical City Eye and Vision Institute in partnership with Alcon. During our first episode, we got to know about the whys of doing toric cataract surgery from our speakers, Dr. Victor Caparas and Dr. Tisha Duyonko. Today, we will be answering the hows of going about toric cataract surgery. Brace yourselves as we are going more into the nitty-gritty of this particular type of surgery. But before we go further, let us begin our program by hearing from Mr. Samra Joshi, the Surgical Commercial Head and Country Manager of Alcon, for his opening remarks. Hi, everyone. Once again, a warm greetings from Alcon Philippines. This point in time, I would like to take the opportunity to thank and congratulate the Department of Ophthalmology within Medical City to come up with a brilliant program of impact what is IMPACT? IMPACT program is all put together the astigmatic awareness uh, program or the series of lectures for an individual who wants to learn about introducing the astigmatic treatment from the surgical point of view in their practice right from the pre-workup to the intraoperative and the post-operative things. This program has been uh, you know, executed in association with Alcon where a lot of uh, resources also are being provided and supported by Alcon. And I would like to sincerely thank the, the leadership of ophthalmology division within Medical City to come up with such a brilliant, brilliant and a comprehensive program for, for a lot of ophthalmologists who are eyeing on to introduce this important aspect within their practice. At this point in time, this series of lectures are not only limited to Philippines, but also is going to be broadcasted within the every corner of the world. So once again, I would like to congratulate Alcon team to work with the eye department in the institute and also a big kudos to the eye department by coming up with such a comprehensive and a brilliant program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Joshi, for that warm welcome for our viewers. And thank you to Alcon for teaming up with us to offer our viewers a segment that would be relevant to the times. Again, I would like to remind our viewers that this mini-series is still a part of the TMC EVI celebration of Sight Saving Month. This is our small contribution in the improvement of eye health of our patients by further enhancing the outcomes in cataract surgery. Also, please be reminded that this webinar series is just one half of the whole IMPACT program. After going through the whole webinar series, which will end in October, interested participants will be encouraged to enroll in the program and perform an actual toric surgery. This will be institution-based, just as what we have started here in the Medical City for our junior consultants and residents. All right, now to our main event. This evening we will be answering the house of toric surgery. Some questions that may arise before doing your cataract surgery would include, how do you maximize the ocular surface? How do we mark properly? Are marker machines necessary? What is the proper patient positioning? To answer all these and more, our speaker is none other than Dr. Ana Lisa Yu Mateo. Dr. Lisa obtained her medical degree at the University of the Philippines, Manila. She finished her ophthalmology residency training at Philippine General Hospital, Manila, where she received or where she served as chief resident. She eventually finished her fellowship in cornea, refractive, and laser surgery at the University of California, Los Angeles, Jules Stein Eye Institute, and Singapore National Eye Center. 
She is currently the department chair of Rizal Medical Center, Department of Ophthalmology, and also an active consultant at the Medical City, Philippine General Hospital, and American Eye Center. She has also previously graced us with ITV as she talked about the 2.2 millimeter cataract incision last July 2021 and the use of cyclosporine in treating ocular surface disease last November 2021. If you have questions, please do not hesitate to type them down in our chat box and we will try our best to accommodate all questions during the Q&A later on. Without further ado, let us now give the floor to Dr. Lisa Yung Mateo. Hi, Doctor. You can start your presentation. Okay. I will start sharing. Okay. So you can see my slides already. Yes, Doctor. Let me see lang how to. Wait lang. Okay. So good evening, everyone, for today's episode which is the second session of the Alcon Impact Program, I'll be discussing the preoperative and intraoperative considerations when you implant a toric IOL. So this is the outline of my talk. So over the past one to two decades, no, cataract surgery has evolved and it is now considered a form of refractive surgery. So as such, now, accurate and precise calculation of IL power, including astigmatism correction, is crucial. Currently, most surgeons would probably consider correcting astigmatism if it is one diopter or more. However, more and more surgeons are lowering their thresholds to 0.75 because some studies showed that Resultant astigmatism should be less than 0.75 diopters in patients seeking spectacle independence after cataract surgery, especially with multifocal IOLs. So there are different types of toric IOLs available in the market. No? Uh, first design is the more familiar C-loop design. No? For example, the Alcon, the Rainer. No? Then there is the second group, which is the plate haptic design, such as the Zeiss and Lentis IOLs. So standard toric IOLs are usually available in cylinder powers of one to six diopters. This is intended to correct pre-existing regular corneal astigmatism ranging from 0.75 to 4.75 diopters. For higher cylinder powers, no. Uh, you can have an IOL customized. However, this may take maybe two to three months to be manufactured and delivered. So after you have performed uh, the biometry on your patient, now we now have to move on to doing an online toric IOL calculation. So if you go to the Packers website, no, uh, under the IOL formula tab, now you see the baritoric calculator. I usually prefer the baritoric calculator mainly because it takes into consideration the posterior corneal astigmatism. So you just click on that and it brings you to this page. So for this one, you, you fill in all the squares with the necessary data. And then on the right side, under where you see the personal constant, now when you click that, there is a drop down menu of the most common brands and models of IOLs. So you just 
choose which one you are going to use for your patient. However, if the IL you are using is not in the list, no, you can manually fill in the lens factor box or the A constant box. So when you click calculate, no, this is what appears next. Oh, before I forget, no, on the right upper hand corner, no, you have the box that says IOL. When you click that, no, it is a drop down menu of the spherical IOL power that you would see in your biometry, such as the lens star or the IOL master. No. And then eventually, no, it will give you a print out of this page. So for my patient, Mr. MC, no, I the biometry is asking for a 20 diopter T5 using an Alcon uh, toric IQ lens. However, if your IOL is not in the drop down menu, what will appear under toric power is this one, yung T2, T3, T4, etc. Each of these has a corresponding IOL, uh, power, IOL cylinder power, no? such as T2 is equivalent to 1, no? T3 is equivalent to 1.5. So you just compare it with the manufacturer's uh, available IOLs. Alcon has its own online toric calculator, no? and then you get to choose between Barrett or Holiday for that. Uh, usually, I just choose Barrett, and it will more or less give you the same um, power as what you would do if you'd gone through the Apacker's website. Zeiss also has its own online toric calculator um, page or website. No? I usually check the Z-Calc normogram in the middle of the page. The Z-Calc normogram is their own mathematical compensation for posterior uh, corneal astigmatism. So um, let's talk about digital marking systems. There are two commonly used systems in the Philippines, the, the Varian Digital Marker by Alcon and the Calisto I system by Carl Zeiss. Both automatically detects conjunctival and episcleral blood vessels around the limbus. So this is what the variant digital marker looks like. In the near future, Alcon will be launching their Argos biometry and digital marker for microscope system, so we can wait for that. Here in Medical City, we do have the Zeiss Callisto I. Usually, the reference image is taken from the IOL master, and then the one on the right is the image uh, taken from the Callisto and microscope, and then both are compared side by side. No? So this is just an intra-op um, screenshots of uh, my surgery. No? The axis is 174, so it's a before and after. No? So... You know, realistically speaking, not all hospital will have a digital marker system. So what do you do if there is no digital marker system? So you do manual marking. No. So in terms of patient positioning, no. personally, I prefer marking the uh, patient in front of the slit lamp. No. I need to dry the limbus first and then set the beam horizontally and then i ask the patient to look directly at the light so i use a very fine tip skin marker to mark the three and nine position i also prefer making a third mark vertically you know, usually at the 12 o'clock position And this is usually the manual marking tools that I use. There are really many in the market, especially now that uh, the PAO annual convention will be face-to-face. -face, no? there, there will be several um, distributors who will be selling their markers. So you can all take a look there. So this is what is most commonly uh, available and is the most popular, no? the Mendez ring and the corresponding axis marker. And below is what we have. And this is what it looks like intraoperatively. So 
um, how does the digital marking system compare with manual marking systems? No? Most studies do show that digital marking is superior than conventional manual marking, resulting in less post-optoric IL axis misalignment, less post-operative residual astigmatism, less post-operative deviation from targeted induced astigmatism or vector difference. And in some studies, the mean toric IL alignment time was significantly shorter in the digital group and the mean overall surgical time was significantly shorter in the digital group. However, most studies say that there is no statistically significant difference in post-op uncorrected distance visual acuity between the two groups. So as Dr. Caparas mentioned in, last, in the last episode, no, um, a digital marker system is more like icing on the cake, but it's not absolutely necessary. And the lack of it should not make you hesitant in implanting a toric IOL. So I'd just like to share a few tips and pearls that I have learned over the years. No. Uh, first of all, we center the markings on the visual axis. And then you need to choose a discrete marking method that will not bleed. Uh, mark the eye prior to surgery with the patient sitting upright with no head tilt and looking straight. This is because but there are some studies that show when patients are upright versus when they are lying down, now there is cyclotorsion. And then during the surgery, ensure that the optical alignment of the microscope during the marking and especially the lens alignment is directly straight and that there should be no parallax. So just remember, if there are any ocular surface issues, no, please do not hesitate to treat the dry eyes aggressively. And if the measurements look unreliable, do not hesitate to repeat it, even if it does mean asking the patient to come back a second time. Avoid using drops or doing a planation tonometry prior to performing any keratometry or biometry test. And ideally, you should know your personal surgically induced astigmatism, especially if your incision is on the larger side, such as 2.75 millimeter. Uh, for 2.2 millimeter incisions, no, the acceptable SIA that we plug in is usually 0 0.1. No? So this is my last slide. No? Thank you again for listening. Thank you for that very informative lecture, Dr. Alicia. I'm sure many of you have questions after that presentation, and we will give you some time to think about them. To give you a clear insight, we will be addressing some of your questions through uh, the comment section of our YouTube channel, which I'm sure Dr. Ray Mateo is very much ready to answer. Please also <laughs> fill out the attendance sheet posted on the chat box of our YouTube link to have mm -hmm. access to our previous episodes and to be informed of the next ones to come. Before we move on to the next segment of this afternoon's episode, let us watch this short clip prepared for us by our sponsor, Alcon. This is an exciting lens. It's that thing we've been looking for for a while. They have entered the field in a dramatic way with something that pretty much blows everything else out the water. No es que mejoró, es que se transformó totalmente. It made a great, great change in life. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, I can see things I never saw before. It would be my new go-to lens. I would write it 10 out of 10 in all conditions, whether it be night or day. It's just amazing. Encantado. Unbelievable. Fue maravilloso. It's amazing. They've changed my life. It's just life changing. It's the next step. It's been a long time coming. Two, one.
you so much again to Alcon for sponsoring this webinar series on the Alcon Impact Program. In the span of that commercial break, we already have a number of questions that sprouted, of which Dr. Elisa is very much willing to answer. May we now call back Dr. Elisa as we begin this afternoon's Q&A. Okay. Hi, Dr. Hello again. <laughs> so, um, before we start, I do have my own question. <laughs> so, as I was listening to your uh, lecture, the first thing that you discussed also, one of the first few things you discussed was the different types of IOLs, like the mm -hmm. C haptic and the uh, plate haptic. Of the two, which one do you usually prefer to put? And what's the advantage of one over the other? Actually, for me, both are pretty much the same in terms of uh, post-op refraction. And they do very well in targeting astigmatism correction. Uh, a lot of patients, uh, sorry, a lot of surgeons are more comfortable with the C loop, you no, know, because it's what we've been using. You know, so we know how to inject it, how to turn it. Uh, the only thing with the C loop is sometimes when you do remove the viscoelastic from under the IOL, it shifts and yeah. then you overshoot, and then you just have to rotate it again. But it's not very hard to rotate it. Kind of we're talking of rotating it three hundred sixty degrees, ah. Uh, because the lenses are very, very gentle. Advantage naman of the plate haptic is you can turn it bidirectionally. But the problem sometimes with plate haptic is hindi siya adjustable in terms of the overall length. Unlike the C-loop, di ba? If you saw the commercial kanina, it fits into a 10, a 9.59, no? Kasi nag adjust yung haptic. For high myo patients with very large bags, the plate haptic type of IL, unfortunately, can spin around on its own. So we have had patients on the table perfectly aligned. Patient comes back the following day, and you're wondering, bakit ang pangit ng refraction? And then lo and behold, the IL that you had implanted, which was supposed to be 180, had become 90. So you have to go in and uh, rotate it all over again. Yeah, that's also my dilemma, Doctora, mm -hmm. when I have a patient with high myo. Am I supposed to put uh, a C-haptic or a plate-haptic? Oh, that's a good if, suggestion. Yeah, diba? So, yeah. I guess it, uh, personally, for, for patients na high myo with very large bag, I'd probably go for a C-loop. As long as I can find a toric IL that will come near to what the patient needs. Actually, that goes for me as well. Because mm -hmm. I, I tried that plate haptic for a high myo. Parang, mm -hmm. It tends to be too loose inside the bag. Mm -hmm. oh, that's that's yeah. my experience. Mm -hmm. And then another more, mm -hmm. <laughs> another question before we start with other questions. I have lots of questions actually. Yeah. No? Um, so we mentioned about the, the digital markers, mm -hmm. you know, the digital marking system. Um. Let's say, Dr. Rado, this is just a, a scenario. Let's say you don't have uh, a digital marker system, which is mm -hmm. quite common in most mm -hmm. of the hospital here. I've come across with this uh, uh, smartphone app, which is Storycam. Have, have mm -hmm. you heard about that, Dr. Have, I think I saw, study, uh, I saw a study that said the smartphone app na ganun -ganun, but I haven't yeah. actually really looked into it eh. Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. I was just thinking, no, that could be a game changer for those people who oh. don't have that access for digital markers, no? Mm -hmm. no so, we can probably use it. <laughs> I, I think it's free. Mm -hmm. I actually tried downloading it, no? mm -hmm. uh, and it's free, but I haven't tried using it just yet. I'll okay. explore that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, do we have questions now? <laughs> okay, so let's go to their questions, huh? Okay, so first question is, are digital markers like Verion and Callisto cost-effective? Hmm. Bottom line, I think if it's a big hospital with a lot of consultants and surgeons uh, practicing and doing surgery, then in the long run, it'll be more uh, cost-effective. Anyway, usually you can charge a little bit more for that technology and patients will understand them and why the facility fee may be a little bit higher than not. And sometimes some patients I mean, don't really mind, no? And it really does make life so much easier if you have that, so much more accurate also. 
I do agree so, with you, Dr. Ara. And if you look at the big picture, if we want to offer, you know, a toric lens later uh -huh. on as a standard of care, I think uh -huh. it's a good investment already yes. if you have this uh -huh. digital uh -huh. markers on hand. Okay, now for the next question, we have the second question up. Okay, for large capsular bags, do you have any experience in experience inserting capsular tension ring to tighten the bag and prevent IOL spin? We've sometimes done that, uh, especially if we need to put in a plate haptic because that's the uh, only one available. Um, I remember Dr. Ko did that, no? And uh, it really worked very well because you can really see the, uh, no, the bag and then again, mas tote, no? But uh, routinely, I don't do it all the time. Maybe siguro if I see that the IOL really is very loose and I'm having a bit of a problem centering it, then I'll think of uh, putting a CTR. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> now, our next question. Yes. For our next question, um, how do you do manual marking on patients who cannot sit up? Do you just assume an amount of uh, cyclotorsion or extortion? And no, that's very hard to, ano eh, to estimate na how much cyclotorsion because the range is quite big. Eh. Uh, for patients who are probably not that um, mobile, uh, I'd probably also just do a plain monofocal. Na IOL. Because sometimes I find that uh, it's easier to deal with the same axis and same amount of uh, astigmatism in that particular patient than putting an IOL and then you're not very accurate and then you end up with a mixed type of refraction and then the patient is unhappy because you flip the uh, axis. So baka better yeah, na lang the long run na safer na you leave them where they are quite used to na. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that happens sometimes, you know, flipping mm -hmm. the axis. No? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you, Dr. Tara. Uh, do we have a next question? Okay, for our next question, how critical to IOL toric alignment is the angle of the microscope to the corneal plane? Should the microscope be always perpendicular to the corneal plane? Or iris plane. For me, actually, uh, it's probably not that very much crucial. Uh, I just want to make sure that the head position of the patient is straight and that the patient hasn't tilted, you know. And then I ask the patient to really concentrate in the middle of the three lights if you're using the uh, Lumera. Or two lights if you're using the Leica system. Make sure that they're they are really looking at those lights. And that's the most important for me, Nana. And then I need to make sure that the center of the IOL more or less falls in the those lights. Okay. Noted, Doctora. Uh, do we have any other questions? Okay. So what is your criteria to predict a large capsular bag? I don't have a fixed criteria personally. No, um, usually a clue would be to look at the lens thickness. No, and generally speaking, patients who are really high myop, they're talking like less than ten diopters of IL power. No, will have to be a little bit larger. But a lot of lenses are, especially the C loop type of lenses, are forgiving. Naman, eh? so so sometimes I don't really. Um, Angs myself too much in in <laughs> in predicting the how large or how uh, small it is, and sometimes really you have no choice. Eh? It depends on what is currently available in the market for that particular power. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, do we have uh, another question? Okay. Oh, what do you look for to decide that the eye is dry? and should be treated before doing biometry and proceeding with surgery? Oh, uh, just like Keisha mentioned last time, you, know, uh, you can see naman the topography pattern on the, um, let's say, if you have the Pentacam. You know, but generally speaking, even if you don't have those machines, uh, typical like what we have been teaching the residents when they uh, 
they diagnose dry eye, di ba? Check the BUT. Check if there are any punctate keratitis, no? We can even do a shimmers. Uh, and we, sometimes I prefer also doing two uh, different readings in separate days as long as the patient is able to come back because you'll see if there are any changes. Eh. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, it's really just much easier to do the BUT and check for punctate keratitis. And if you see any, then treat it either with uh, cyclosporine, uh, artificial tears, uh, mild steroids, you know, wait two weeks and then just ask the patient to come back. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tara. Uh, do we have another question? Okay, that's long time contact lens use affect biometry. Mm -hmm. How long to discontinue contact lenses before being able to have a reliable care reading? Okay, so I'll start off Muna with uh, RGPs, rigid gas permeable lenses. Usually for RGPs, the, page, the RGPs have to be off. Uh, the, the rule of thumb is one week for every year of RGP wear. Uh, and we normally do serial topography because that's the only way you can see if the cornea has warpage and if the warpage is decreasing. Um, some patients, especially those with poorly fitting RGPs, can take as long as three months before their cornea stabilizes and before you have, you're confident enough to use that K reading. For soft toric contact lenses, no, normally one to two weeks is good enough. It's much more forgiving for soft contact lenses. The issue really more with soft contact lenses is dry eyes. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, do we have any more questions left? Okay. Uh, do you think correcting a 75 cylinder should be standard of care provided patient is willing? Uh, for me right now, yes. Especially if you're using a multifocal IOL. Okay. Uh, then, of course, you have to weigh it with, you know, because that's only 0.75. Eh? Yes. Then also, you have to weigh it with the budget capability of the patient. Okay, but Dr. Know, do you, yeah, yeah. follow-up question to that. Uh, if it's a 0.75, do you also try to venture in putting an LRI? I honestly, I, I, I was never a firm believer in LRI. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, what about uh, putting your uh, incision, main incision on the steep uh, axis? It depends because, diba. Uh, if it's really in the temporal, maybe from, uh, let's say, uh, zero, and then you're just 10 degrees to the right or a little bit 10 degrees to the left, no, it's doable. But if it's superior, it's very hard because, you know, especially for my patient, there are a lot of Chinese and they have their so, so small little eyes. Na small eyes. They just don't have enough room to do that. Yes. Unlike the Americans and the Caucasians, they have big eyes. No, They can probably yeah, position it anywhere. But the problem there, doctor, is a prominent uh, brow, eh? Brown fur. For, for, <laughs> for Caucasian, it's like that. So it's hard to go really in the superior. Oh, oh and it's like the yeah. angles going down wide. Yeah, yeah, I know. I have one last question <laughs> for you, doctor. And I guess this would benefit also some of the residents. Mm -hmm. um, when we do uh, put our um, uh, reference axis uh, for the the 0180, you know, before mm -hmm. we do uh -huh. our surgery. Because uh, I, I had this problem yesterday that uh, the slit lamp was actually busted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it had to do with freehand. Mm -hmm. so, so for the interest of our uh, residents, so, so how would you do it? How, how do we uh, do the freehand marking step by step, Doctor? What should they follow? How how do they instruct their patients? Siguro, if for example you're in the OR na and it's busted and so great, you don't have much choice. It's there na, eh, di ba? You're there na. Yes. So just make sure na lang that the patient is uh, looking straight. The head is not tilted. Then probably, di ba? The toric marker comes with a ruler. Siguro just have to oh, no, align it sa cantal. Le, diba, sa cantus ng patient. Or, or Dr. Tara, the Hirschberg. 
uh, pupillary light reflex. Mm-hmm. We, can, we can actually yes, uh, align it with that. Uh-oh. Yes, yes. Then you need the, uh, uh, the resident to hold the pen light for you. Yes, that's true. <laughs> actually, that's what they did. Hold the, uh, we, don't, we didn't have even the pen light in the OR, so we had to use the, the light from the, uh, the phone. The <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it happens. Mm-mm. Yeah. Okay. So that's our last question. And I believe um, uh, we don't have any questions left. So once again, uh, we would like to thank you, Dr. Elisa, for gracing mm-hmm. us today. It was really a pleasure to uh, listen to your experiences regarding the historic implantation, historic mm-hmm. lens implantation. Uh, very insightful, I would say. So we have now come to the last part of our program, which is Mm -hmm. TMC ITV Bulletin. Mm -hmm. This segment will highlight events, happenings, and conferences in the world of ophthalmology. I would like to welcome one of our residents, Dr. Camille Season, to give us a quick update on what to watch out for in the next few months. Camille? Mm -hmm. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. To all our viewers, on behalf of the Medical City Eye and Vision Institute, thank you for attending this episode of ITV. It means quite a lot to us that you are all able to take time out of your busy schedules to join us here tonight. We know that it's been quite a hectic season so far. ORs are now packed and clinics are starting to fill up once again. But with that also comes the opening up of more conferences and events to keep us on our toes. In times like these, it's hard to keep track on important events happening around us. But don't worry, here's a quick roundup of the things you need to know about the world of ophthalmology in the next few months. So let's take a trip around the world to see what is in store for us in the next months. Next slide, please. Buonasera, Italy, in Milan. Done. E- uh, CRS will be happening in just a few weeks. It will be on September 16 to 20. Abstract submissions are closed, but you can still register and book your tickets. Our very own Dr. Victor will be one of the speakers for this lecture live. Register to attend. Next, please. In November this year, we'll be saying... Sawadika, Thailand, for the Asia Cornea Society and Asian Neuro-Ophthalmology Society meetings. These meetings will be held from November 23 to 25, and they actually extended abstract submission until September 19. So there's still time to submit. Let's go. Next, please. Events are also beginning to open up for next year in 2023. First, we have the Asia-Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology Congress in Malaysia in February. For those interested, abstract submissions and travel grants are still being accepted. Actually, there are only 10 days left for the APAO Young Ophthalmologist Travel Grant applications, which will be until September 10. They will be subsidizing amounts of up to 1,000 US dollars. So check out their website for more details. Next, please. Oh wow, now we're back to Italy, but this time in Rome. On June 28 to July 1, 2023, we have the 10th World Glaucoma Congress. Abstract submissions and registration is still open, so there's still time to join in. Abstract submissions for WGC is open until January, so you've still got time to work on those papers and submit them just in the nick of time. The conference will be held from June 28 to July 1. Perfect timing for those who still want to dive into the world of glaucoma. Next, please. So as we can see, there's so many events happening all around the world. But let us not forget the much-awaited in-person, face-to-face Philippine 2022 uh, PAO Annual Congress. We are two months away from this year's conference, which will be held at the SMX Convention Center on November 29 to December 2. Everyone's already talking about the live in-person demos and lectures and, of course, the most common topic, which is what instruments and equipment they're going to buy there. I know a lot of us are 
very excited to see the local Philippine Opta community gather together after being apart for so long during this pandemic. Next, please. Speaking of which, of the Philippine Opta community, it seems like every year our community just keeps growing and growing. With this, we are happy to announce that the TMC EVI Ophthalmology Residency Program is now accepting applicants for 2023. We will be having two batches of applicants this year. Batch 1 will run from October 1 to 31, and Batch 2 will run from November 14 to December 12. Deadline for Batch 1 is September 19. So if you know anyone who's interested or any aspiring IMD, send them our way and give us a call. We will be happy to see them. Get it? Okay, next. So that's all for now. Again, on behalf of the TMC EVI, we'd like to thank you for attending this episode of IV. We hope you join us again for our next episode. Thank you very much, and I hope you all have a good night. Thank you for that, Camille. As the pandemic wanes and restriction, restrictions slowly ease out, it is really exciting to have the opportunity to learn and interact with our fellow ophthalmologists and industry partners through these conferences and forums. Now, to all our viewers, please, please fill out the attendance sheet posted on the chat box of our YouTube link to have access to our previous episodes and to be informed of future episodes to come. We definitely have a lot of, in store for you in the coming months. For our next episode, we will be having the FACO conference proper. Various story cases will be shown by our consultants, fellows, and residents, including some of the difficulties that you may encounter. Of course, this will include the tips and tricks on how to go about them for a smoother toric cataract surgery. That is truly an exciting episode to look forward to. We will be taking a short break for the next month, and we will be back for the second part of our Alcon Impact program this October. Again, the webinar series is just the first stage in completing the program. After viewing these four episodes, interested ophthalmologists may contact Alcon for them to be able to explore implementing this program in the various institutions, just as they had done it here at the Medical City. Once again, I would like to thank Dr. Alisa Yumateo for a very engaging, informative, and thought-provoking episode today. I would also like to thank our sponsor, Alcon, and of course, our viewers, for your continued support as we go three seasons strong. I'm Dr. Debbie Shapno of the TMC Eye and Vision Institute, and thank you for tuning in to TMC Eye TV, Ophthalmic Instructions Without Borders. Good night.